gets hurt in the accident, it's always the other guy because he's all relaxed, right? Because when the accident happens, he doesn't contract. Talk to a football player. They'll tell you how they take the big hits. They completely relax right before they get the big hit. If you can, we have a tendency to contract every time we have some kind of emotional or existential or psychological pain. Wilhelm Reich. Did anybody hear Wilhelm Reich? He talked about this. Every time you contract, every time you're in pain, you contract. Every time something happens, you contract. Well, each one of these little contractions is a point of anoxia or hypoxia, low oxygen. Each one of these, and you add them all up, and you've got a suffocated body that is in constant alert mode, hypervigilant mode. Not good. Remember, the body grows under conditions of rest. We go throughout the day putting the body under the exact opposite conditions. We spend our entire day telling the body there's a saber-toothed tiger chasing us, right? And that's why I get really mad when somebody says, well, just take this or just take that, because that's not fair. If your body thinks the saber-toothed tiger is coming after you, it's not going to help you what you take. And this is why sometimes people get a, a nutrition or alternative practitioners or you know, people who understand certain things get a bad rap, because they're trying to treat a body that's in, in safe mode without addressing the body's uh, uh, stress, uh, emergency, emergency state, hypervigilance state. What's so cool about this is we control it. We control it. People, we control it. Do you know every time you think a crappy thought, guess who gets punished and hurt? Every time you think how much you hate that person, you're jealous of that person, you're mad at that person, who are you hurting? Myself. Yes. <laughs> Where's that chemistry going? Whose cortisol's going up? Whose adrenaline's going up? Who's shortening their lifespan every time you do that? We have something in our head called mirror neurons. Anybody know about mirror neurons? Mirror neurons, right? Mirror neurons, you look at somebody else and you feel what they're feeling. There's neurology in your head that mirrors other people's uh, state of being. So we have control over this emergency response. And if you leave right now and you learn nothing else, Learn to control this emergency state that we're all under. And it could be simple, something as simple as deep breathing. And if you don't believe me, get a blood pressure cuff. How many of you have done this? You get a blood pressure cuff, and you put it on, and you take your blood pressure, and then you do five minutes of deep breathing. I have an app on my iPhone. Do you ever seen that app on the iPhone? My Calm Beat. You just look at it, and you just practice your deep breathing right there. And, and by the way, you have to learn how to deep breathe. The belly goes out. You want to deep breathe once? Do it one deep breath. You always do it slow. This is the key, you're always slow, as slow as you can actually, and then through the nose, and as, you're, as the breath comes down, the belly goes out like a balloon. And you have a, a muscle here that goes down called your diaphragm, you make yourself look really silly and fat, and so you gotta deal with it. And then push belly out, and then on the exhale, slow on the exhale. And you can almost feel how you relax, almost that. Now imagine if you do that, you, did you guys feel this? Yeah, I just once. Imagine you do it all day. Imagine you do it every day. Imagine what that would do. How that would shut down that stress response. How it shut, and that's so easy. You don't need a drug. You don't need a doctor. You don't need Obamacare. You don't need insurance companies. You don't need pharmacy. That's it. This is all ours. This is the bright side. This is the good news. This is all ours. This is all ours. We own this. No cost is free. Breath is free. There's a reason why ancient people called God the breath and breath spirit. It's the same word in Greek. It's as simple as that. So, nutrient, respirate, move, and rest. Now, when I say respirate and I talk about breathing, this is very important, this oxygenation. And by the way, when you blow, exhale, you're blowing out poison. People want a detox program? Great detox program right there. So you got nutrient, uh, respirate, move, and rest. But in terms of oxygenation, we're talking about at the cell level. And this is very important. And this will get us into our next, into the fourth point on the square. And that is the idea that when we're talking about oxygenation, when we're talking about respiration, we're talking about oxygenation. What does oxygen do? What does it do? What do you do? You have a fire. If you want to make that fire hotter, what do you do? You add what? Oxygen, right? Right? Well, how, you know how they make steel? Anybody know the story about how they make steel? They figured out how a way to super oxygenate the fire. So it gets super, super hot. And a guy named Remington, I think, was the guy who developed this process for creating a super oxygenated fire so it could heat, heat iron and turn it into steel. In any case, oxygen makes things burn. It doesn't burn, by the way. It makes things burn. And your cells have figured out, 
how to use oxygen is actually not even your cells. It's little structures inside your cells. Anybody know what these little structures are called? Remember those, that little tiny thing we call a cell that was one one hundredth or one two hundredth the size of a head of a pin? Well, inside of it, this little thing, there are a hundred, sometimes a thousand or more little structures that burn oxygen like your fireplace burns oxygen or like your engine burns oxygen, except it doesn't burn this kind of oxygen. It burns atoms of oxygen. Mitochondria. Yes, they're called mitochondria, exactly. They're called mitochondria, and the mitochondria burn atoms of oxygen. So every time you breathe, oxygen filters its way through the blood and through the lymph and on red blood cells and, and rides on red blood cells and is distributed in a little, boop, little drop of oxygen, a little molecule of oxygen, and the cell is a magnet. This is creating an electrical current, and it goes, pulls in the oxygen. And then the oxygen goes into the cell, and then it goes into the mitochondria. I'm not even going to tell you what happens in there. Holy moly. <laughs> Google electron transport. Google YouTube electron transport if you really want to get a kick at that, what the body's like. Electron transport. That's, that's amazing stuff right there. In any case, the mitochondria burn the oxygen. But under conditions of lack of oxygen, it can't happen that way, and it has to go into a secondary source of, of energy production, and that is sugar. We call that kind of cell, by the way, a cancer cell. Cancer cell is a cell that has not gotten oxygenated for so long, it knows how to burn sugar. So when I talk about respiration, I'm talking about not just respiration through the big picture, I'm talking about cellular respiration. And that's really what's happening as you breathe, is you're feeding cells oxygen. Because remember, all disease is cell disease. And what happens to cells is they suffocate, they become toxic, and they become starved. And so when you breathe, you're taking care of the suffocation, hopefully. So if you want to do nothing else but take care of your health, practice deep breathing. Oxygenate your cells. Now, the second thing, uh, the last, thing, last point on our square is nutrients. And before I get into nutrients, I do have to say that in the healing world, and I say this periodically, but I don't say it anywhere near enough, in the world of health, in the world of wellness, it's multidimensional. Health and wellness are spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, in that order. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And the way I look at it is crisis is spiritual crisis. Health crisis is spiritual crisis. And every time you think a thought, it gets turned into your body. And every time you feel a feeling, it gets turned into your body via the action of hormones. That's what a hormone does. Is it takes thought energy and feeling energy, one of the things, and turns it into chemical energy and makes your body. This is not some Boulder, Colorado, hippy-dippy, airy-fairy talk. This is hardcore biochemistry science. Thoughts and feelings get, create your body. So I say this because I, I don't want to be portrayed in any way, shape, or form, especially if we're going to be uploaded on YouTube, I don't want to be portrayed in any way, shape, or form as the nutrition, kind of nutritionist that says, oh, just take this vitamin and that vitamin, and you'll be fine. You have to understand spiritual, mental, emotional, and then physical. We good? Okay? All right, now, from a physical perspective, we talked about respiration, we talked about movement, and we talked about rest. We have to talk about my favorite way to work with the healing process, to work with the healing body, and that is nutrition. Now, to this day, I am blown away by people who say to me, Oh, I don't believe in that nutrition stuff. I have a guy upstairs, he's a doctor, lives upstairs for me, and he says, oh, are you still, I told him about nutrition, is that vitamins and stuff? And this is the doctor saying this to me, okay? We still don't get the fundamental point about nutrition. You are nutrition, we are vitamin C, I am fatty acids, I am protein, I am zinc, you are iron and magnesium, we are nutrition. That's what nutrition is, it's us. It's us. When you eat a carrot, you end up with little pieces of carrot in your eyes. When you take supplements, you wear them on your skin. They're in your skin. They're stored. They go through your digestive tract. They go in your skin. You are nutrition. How should this be a hard sell to anybody? Because it's hidden in plain sight. It seems it's so obvious. We don't even notice it. We are nutrition. How dare anybody put us on a drug when we are nutrition? How dare anybody look down their nose or have any kind of negative derogatory thing to say about nutrition when we are that. We are that. It is the fundamental component of your material body. And to not be taking advantage of that is stupidity. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's stupidity to not be exploiting the availability of nutrition and nutritional supplements if you have a breakdown or no matter what, even if you're healthy. 
We are nutrition, but we don't know anything about nutrition, unfortunately. And much of what we do think we know, maybe you hear the Sturgeon's, Sturgeon's Law? Have you heard of Sturgeon's Law? Sturgeon's Law is 90% of what we know is bull crap. It's called Sturgeon's Law. That's basically how it is. We, oh, we have so many misunderstandings. I said earlier, cholesterol is great for you. Eat it. There's no top end. The best foods in the world are cholesterol. Salt is great for you. This is one of Dr. Wallach's true, wherever Dr. Wallach is, one of his true geniuses, uh, genius insights was how important salt was. Minerals were for you. Salt is minerals. That's what minerals are. They're salt. Low salt diet. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Serotonin. You, have any, you heard me talking about serotonin, right? Serotonin, happy hormone. No! Serotonin is a stress hormone. Why do you think people go nuts on serotonin? We have so many misunderstandings in the world of nutrition and in the world of uh, how we take care of ourselves from a dietary perspective. So we have to understand the basics. The basics are simple as macronutrition and micronutrition. Macro and micro. Macro meaning big, micro meaning small. Macro is protein, fats, good sugars, fiber, and water. Simple as that. Protein. Nobody, 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 unless they're super concentrating on protein, they're a bodybuilder, they're an athlete, they're making millions of dollars on their bodies, is using protein correctly. Why do you think athletes use protein? What are, what are athletes trying to do? Are they trying to get weaker? Are they trying to degenerate? Are they trying to break down? No. No, they're trying to build. We're all athletes. Getting your butt out of bed in the morning is an athletic event. We're all friggin' athletes. We're all athletes. That's right. That's right. You better believe it. Everything we do is that type of, it's going against entropy somehow, you know? That's what the life force is. Of course you need protein. Who, I hear people like, say all the time, oh, you don't need that much protein. It's just, it's, it's all, no, you don't, 10 grams, 13 grams, 15 grams. Half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight and your body will tell you when you've had enough protein. It'll tell you, listen, our bodies are always talking to us and we don't listen. Everybody's, everybody knows that their bodies are talking to us. You've all heard it, right? Thank you. You all heard it. Take the, the how many of you guys like Snickers bars? What? Snickers bars. <laughs> Snickers bars. You know what I'm going to do, but I want to do it for the strange, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do this for the people, the new people here. How many of you guys like, you like Snickers bar? Where's that point? Somebody over here. So you got the, okay, guilty. He's smiling like he's guilty over there. All right, good. They, you know what? If you like Snickers bars, don't worry about it. They know how to make you like Snickers bars. They know every little sound. You know when you rip the candy bar, when you, that tape, that sound is scientifically designed, the right frequency, so it hits the right part of your brain to make you want that. <laughs> next, time, next time you get a McDonald's hamburger, unwrap it, and you'll think, oh, it's Christmas, in the back of your head. <laughs> in the back of your head. It'll be in the back of your head. It'll be like you're, oh, a present, you know? That's planned. They know. There's, inst there's PhDs that understand how these things work. There's a place called the Morell. It's, it's either the Morell or the Manel Institute, Morell Institute in Philadelphia, where it's all funded by drug companies and food companies, and they study how every molecule affects every part of your, of your uh, desire center in your brain to, know, to make you to like certain foods. So if you like Snickers bars, it's not your fault. They got it figured out, okay? <laughs> but the next time you have a Snickers bar, or anybody, because we all have our little vices, don't be laughing, you all have yours, right? So uh, next time you have your Snickers bar, open it up real slow. What's that? No. no, yeah, that's sneaky. Oh, you're a sneaky man. Okay, that's a sneaky trick. No, you, you open it up real slowly, and as you're opening it up, raise it to your mouth and listen real close, and you, you'll hear a voice go, No! <laughs> Just, have you heard it? Do you know what I'm talking about? You, have, you haven't heard it? Come on, and you're not listening, because it's there. It's a still, small voice, and it will always talk to you. It will always tell you. It'll always tell you, we just don't listen to our bodies. Protein will tell you, nobody binges on protein. Nobody binges on protein. And the best kind of protein is the building protein. I said earlier, I was teasing about finding a breast. Well, it might be difficult, okay, granted. <laughs> find yourself, find yourself, find yourself some whey protein. It's the next best thing. It's the next best thing. Whey protein. I've been talking about whey protein for a long time because I used to work out, I used to be an athlete, and I used to participate in that world, and we all knew about whey protein. Because bodybuilders are making money, their livelihood or their passion is to build their bodies. And they know about the power of protein, and especially the power of whey protein. Whey protein is where the building factors are concentrated. And so I always have people tell me about, and I know milk is a problem, 
Milk is definitely a problem. Whey tends to be less problematic than milk. And, and these days, cows and milk is it's not the greatest in the world.